Hello Bruins! Today we're continuing our series on source evaluation by covering the levels of evidence method most commonly used in the health field. This method builds on what we discussed in our reliable sources and scholarly sources videos. In those videos, we touched on the fact that there are different degrees to which a source might be reliable or trustworthy. Because the health field is such a high stakes area of work, we want to be sure that the methods used are supported with as much evidence as possible. In the levels of evidence method, we are only looking at scholarly sources, but discussing the range of support or evidence that they used to find the cream of the crop with the most evidence. The levels of evidence is usually illustrated as a hierarchical pyramid. So imagine we have an experienced doctor that tells us that based on his experiences, he believes a certain treatment is best. He would be considered an expert in the field and is probably a trustworthy source. But what we have here is just an opinion. The doctor didn't deliberately go out and experiment or collect data. He's just basing his statement on his related experience. So even though this would probably be considered a reliable source, it is the lowest level on the levels of evidence pyramid because we don't actually have any evidence. So we begin to look at sources using data. Generally speaking, there are two types of academic research data, qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative is based more on experiences or feelings, for example, polling people on how they feel on a particular issue or studying how patients felt after a particular treatment alone. Quantitative studies are based more on hard data, such as looking at patients' blood pressure levels before and after a treatment. While qualitative research has many important uses, we would favor quantitative research when making decisions on treatment. So the next two levels of the pyramid would be a qualitative study and then a systematic review of qualitative studies. A systematic review is essentially one long paper that summarizes the findings of a dozen studies on the same topic. Here looking at multiple qualitative studies to come to one broad conclusion. So now we move into quantitative studies. The next piece we're looking at is how the researchers collected the data. We want to have as many participants as possible, since one person's experience does not tell us how all people would react to a treatment, for example. Additionally, the participants should be selected in as random a way as possible to eliminate any common factors that might be skewing the results. So in the next few levels, we move from a case control study, or one person, to a group of people without randomization, and then a randomized study where the participants will have less common features, and so hopefully our observations will be more broadly accurate. And our final level is a systematic review of randomized studies. So we have dozens of papers collecting their data in an unbiased way, hopefully all coming to the same conclusion, and at this point we can be fairly sure whether this treatment is effective or not. So to summarize, the main idea here is to ensure that healthcare decisions are made based on as much evidence as possible. So pay attention to one, if the source uses data, two, if the source is using a qualitative or quantitative research method, three, how large and how randomized the population studied was, and four, whether you're looking at a single study or a systematic review. If you're looking for systematic reviews, our database Cochrane is a great place to go since systematic reviews are the only thing you'll find there. You can find a link to Cochrane in the description or on almost any allied health research guide. This can take some practice, so if you have any questions about the levels of evidence method or anything else related to library research, please ask your Morris librarians.